So I'd like to call to order this regular council meeting of the Town of Saugeen Shores. Uh, again, uh, the first order of business is a declaration of pecuniary interest, so I'll remind you of your responsibility. The next is additions, deletions, or amendments, and uh, we have nothing under that this evening. So the next item then is adoption of the minutes, and it's been moved by Councillor Mike Myatt, seconded by Councillor Don Mathis, and that Council adopt the minutes of the Council meeting of June 11, 2018, as presented in the Ayers Emissions. All in favour? That's carried. Uh, the next is the Committee of the Whole of June the 11th, and it's been moved by Councillor Dave Mayette and seconded by Councillor Grace that Council note and file the minutes of the Committee of the Whole meeting of June the 11th, 2018, as presented. Any errors, remissions, or comments? All in favour? That's carried. So the next item then is a report of the Committee holds a general government report, and it's been moved by Councillor Grace and seconded by Councillor. Dave Mayette, that Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the General Government Report dated June 11th, 2018, recommending that the request by the Victorian Order of Nurses for Canada for additional funding be approved for a period of five years and that staff be delegated the authority to execute an agreement to this effect. Questions, comments? All in favour? That's carried. The next item then is a Community Services, Parks and Recreation Report from June the 11th, and it's been moved by Councillor Neil Minaj, seconded by Councillor Grace. The Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores adopts the Community Services, Parks and Recreation Report dated June the 1st, 2018, recommending the following. The Council approves waiving the fees for the open mic night for the mental health hosted by West for Youth Online in Rotary Hall at the Saugeen Shores Complex scheduled for July the 23rd, 2018. And two, the Council approves staff to proceed with an RFP for the extension of the Port Elgin Main Beach Promenade and the refurbishment of the North Shore Trail, that funding in the amount of $450,000 for this project be allotted from the current year's taxes for advancing the Waterfront Master Plan recommendations. Any, Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, I'd like to request that, that the two be split to two separate questions and that the second one uh, be a recorded vote. And, and I have some comments um, when we get to the second one. Any, qu well, any questions to the first uh, recommendation? All in favor? That's carried. So the second one then. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just um, want to comment on the fact that, um, you know, this, this um, idea that we can somehow just magically find $450,000 in a budget that was discussed starting last fall and um, allocate it for a project. I think that that's um, not very transparent to the community. Um, in the last little while, we've had a couple of, of items on the council agenda about this discretionary reserve fund um, that uh, is to be named. We haven't named it yet. And it's to support, and it's always been described this way, to support the design and construction of specific future community facilities. And a couple of meetings ago, we determined that uh, $480,000 in $480,338 of OPG money was going to be put into this. Um, earlier in the budget process, um, we decided as a council to um, increase um, the tax levy, um, the blended rate, by 3% to the community. And the 3% increase, we were very specific about how it was going to flow through to this discretionary reserve fund to support the design and construction of specific future community facilities. And often, in the discussion, um, a swimming pool athletic um, complex was mentioned, the outdoor sports park, and um, the potential twinning of the Southampton Town Hall and, and the Southampton Library. At our last meeting, um, after um, agreeing um, to fund this from current um, funds, when I very specifically said, let's be honest, it's coming from this discretionary fund, um, you know, we need to be transparent about that because we can't just find $450,000 in the budget. We're actually taking it from someplace else where we put it. And I believe that we were planning responsibly for future big investments that we have to make. And, um, you know, um, the potential existed for us at the end of this year with the OPG money to have about $1.2, $1.3 million sitting there. I don't see any problem with us having a, a mortgage and a savings account. And I don't think there was any intention with the 3% increase on the taxes um, to have it sort of flow through to other things. It was intended for something very specific. 
Um, we said two years ago that we would allocate $1.4 million of debt um, towards the Port Elgin um, Main Beach Phase 1, Phase 2, Phase 3, however many we got, and we would discuss how to pay for those things at various times. We didn't really discuss that. Um, and, you know, quite frankly, I, I feel that it's a little dishonest of us to, to just take money that we've collected from taxpayers for something very specific that we talked about at a number of times since uh, January has a discretionary reserve fund that hasn't been named yet to support the design and construction of specific future community facilities. It wasn't to pay for um, sidewalks and trail rehabs. I'm not saying that those aren't worthwhile projects. I'm just saying that we were planning for much bigger things for the community, and we should be honest with the community that um, that's where we're taking the money from now is, is we were collecting it for that purpose, and we're now shifting it over to pay for a sidewalk extension, a promenade extension, and trail re refurbishment. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Any other comments? I Go ahead. Uh, uh, you go ahead and I'll speak. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just a brief comment to that. Uh, this is really simple. We have two approaches, a less expensive approach and a more expensive approach. Uh, what the Vice Deputy Mayor is, pro is proposing is the more expensive approach. Uh, this approach in the recommendation is the less expensive approach. Uh, we have the money. We don't need to borrow it. And when you have cash in hand and you don't need to borrow, the most sensible thing to do is to use that money and not borrow because borrowed money costs money. So uh, what the taxpayer wants is for us to spend as little of their money as possible to achieve the goals that we set forward for the community on their behalf, and this is the way to do that. So I support the recommendation. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, and I just want to comment to the comment. With, like, I think this is being absolutely transparent. We've had this discussion here, and, and uh, so we've had a little good. Uh, and uh, pending the vote, our community will know. So any further questions? So I, there was a recorded vote, and I'll turn this over to the clerk. It's just for the part two. Thank you. I'll read your names out in alphabetical order. If you're in support, please say yes. If you're not in, in your, if, sorry, if you're in opposition, please say no. So, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau? Yes. Councillor Grace? Yes. Vice Deputy Mayor Huber? No. Councillor Matheson? Yes. Councillor Minaj? Yes. Councillor Mike Myatt? Yes. Councillor Dave Mayette? Yes. Councillor Rich? Yes. Mayor Smith? Yes. That carries. The next item on the agenda then is a staff report uh, and it has to do with the police services headquarters. I'll read the motion and then I, I think the CEO would like to speak to it. Uh, it's been moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, seconded by Councillor Rich. The Council approve a budget of $6,801,308 for the design and construction of the new police services headquarters and the Council approve the tender award for the constructions to Allen Hastings Limited for the amount of $5,568,346 plus tax RFT 2018-6220-5821, Police Services Headquarter Construction General Contractor, and that the Mayor and Clerk be authorized to execute the contract, and that the Treasurer be authorized to implement a special levy to all parties properties as described in the financial impact state section, starting with the first installment in 2019, as approved by the levy bylaw. And I know our CIO wants to speak to a um, uh, uh, change to this. Yeah, th thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. And I will speak to a, a, a very minor uh, modification in just a minute. But I just wanted to, to note to Council that this is a milestone report. Um, if you approve this, then we will be going ahead with the police services building. It's a culmination of about a year's effort by uh, a town staff, including our, our colleagues with the police services, an architect, a, a project manager, and a cost consultant. Um, we are on a budget, uh, as outlined in the report, um, through the process of, of working very closely, and we are uh, continue to be on our uh, timeline for that. Uh, the recommendation that I would like to adjust is that, that the second recommendation, where it says the amount of five million five hundred sixty-eight thousand. $346. I'd like to put a, a qualifier on that, say up to, uh, for the amount up to 
$516,346. And the reason why is, is we are continuing uh, to work really hard to find efficiencies. And last week we have found a, a few more efficiencies that if we do that as part of the contract, we get $100 uh, cent dollars on it. If we do it after the contract is issued, um, then we'll probably only get $0.40 cent dollars on those savings. So this gives us a little bit of flexibility. We won't go higher than that amount, but it gives us flexibility for signing a contract for less than that amount. So we would uh, like your indulgence in, in that modification. I would ask the mover and seconder if that's a friendly amendment. Fine with that. Okay, and then I'll do you write it in here. Do you want me to reread that so everybody understands that? I'll re just read the second part then. That council approves the tender award for construction to Allen Hastings Limited for the amount of up to five million five hundred sixty-eight thousand three hundred forty-six dollars plus tax RFT twenty-eight eighteen sixty-two twenty fifty-eight twenty-one. Please serve as headquarter construction general contractor. Any further comments to it, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to uh, make a comment. Uh, um, both in my capacity here and as in my capacity as the chairman of the police services board, uh, having uh, looked at this process from the beginning, uh, I just really wanted to uh, compliment the municipal administration as well as the police administration for their work on this project. The fact that we were able to get through the planning stage and then over the tendering hump and come in on the budget line is uh, in the in the broader context in which we're operating really a, a, a an outstanding result, like a result that is not we're not used to seeing, frankly, on larger projects. And uh, so I think what it, I just wanted to note that I think it really is a, a vindication of the approach that uh, CAO David Smith uh, instituted on this project, and 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 delivered. Uh, and I think it worked well. And I'd like to see it you know, carried on in similar ways in future large scale projects because I think uh, because it has worked and uh, got us to a point where we can actually build a project actually build a project on budget um, so uh, so thank you very much for that work I know that the police service uh, um, appreciates that those efforts and uh, looking forward to seeing construction underway thank you mr. mayor councillor Dave Mayette thank you mr. mayor and and uh, just to slightly echo those comments from the deputy mayor that uh, I too was impressed with the process that was followed here and and the rigor was put into it it certainly paid off um, just a question about uh, when it talks about the amount, it says plus tax. And could you just comment a little bit about what uh, taxes are applicable? Is it just HST? And, and being a, a large municipal, I think it's actually the largest uh, project that we've taken on as a council here, the largest that we're going to authorize. Uh, are any of those taxes uh, recoverable, being it, that it's a municipal building for police? I think we can direct that to Sue. Um, right. Through you, Mr. Mayor, um, that is the uh, portion of the GS HST, I should say, not GST, HST that we do not get back. So it's a 1.76% that we can't get back from the government. Most of the a HST we can claim through a rebate, but there's a portion, a small portion we cannot. Yeah. No, no, that is the, the cost that we have to absorb of the project of the HST. That's what that number is. Okay, any further comments? All in favor? Opposed to that's carried. So we have a notice of motion, or a motion it is this evening, and it has to do with the cultural master plan, and it's been moved by Councillor Mike Myatt and seconded by Councillor Grace, that whereas the town of Saugeen Shores has completed several master plan documents, including, but not limited to, waterfront master plan, recreation master plan, and parks and trails master plan, and whereas the plans listed above have provided a blueprint for significant improvements to our waterfront parks, trails, facilities, and programs, and whereas one plan yet to be completed is a cultural master plan, and whereas section 1.2.5 of the Saugeen Shores official plan states that, states the goal to identify, conserve, and enhance the town's cultural heritage resources whenever practical, and to encourage all new development and redevelopment to respect important cultural heritage features. And whereas the town of Saugeen Shores has a wealth of cultural and heritage resources that are a result of our rich history, including a significant number of heritage buildings and cultural services that require consideration in terms of coordinated approach with future planning for heritage and cultural initiatives. 
and whereas the recently completed Southampton Town Hall Library Twinning Study could benefit from a cultural master plan that could speak to future uses of the Southampton Town Hall, including but not limited to the development of a cult community cultural hub at this prominent location. And whereas the Town of Saugeen Shores is compromised comprised of <laughs> compromise, sorry about that, comprised of three communities with very distinct and unique cultural and heritage features, namely Port Elgin, Southampton, and Saugeen Township, and a cultural master plan will provide an overall vision and goal to address these unique and distinct features. And whereas changing demographics for all of Saugeen Shores provides potential for volunteer and opportunities and creative involvement, particularly for those entering into the retirement, and whereas a cultural master plan has the potential to provide a link between heritage, culture, and economic development, and whereas it is important, our downtowns as the economic and cultural hubs will, while retaining small town character. And whereas Saugeen Shores is becoming an increasingly diverse community and needs to respond to cultural aspirations, including the promoting of partic participation in cultural activities across the community. And whereas the Saugeen Shores 2017 Corporate Strategic Plan designates a special Saugeen Shores and Saugeen Nation partnership group initiated jointly by the town and First Nation community as a governor's priority and a cultural master plan will support such a partnership. Now hereby be it resolved that the staff be requested to prepare terms of reference for the development of a cultural master plan to be presented as part of the 2019 budget process and further the staff prepare a cost estimate for creating of a cultural master plan in preparation for the 2019 budget process. Okay, comments. Don't say cultural one more time, Mike. I've said it about 50 times now. <laughs> Please, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. And I just want to say it's, it's just in, in a little bit of a heads up for uh, staff, hopefully, to pre start preparing for 2019 uh, uh, budget and um, with terms of reference and some costing. And uh, so it's just to get a leg up on that. I did want to read a letter to you. First of all, I want to thank... Uh, Councilor Grace for uh, for her uh, tremendous help with with helping draft this notice of motion and to members of our heritage committee uh, was also very helpful. I see Bill Streeter here tonight and he's been very supportive. And I did just to uh, summarize. Uh, there's a letter here from Doug McCallum that he asked me to read tonight, so I will, if I if I may. And uh, Mayor Smith, members of the council and staff, I'm pleased to offer my support for the culture master plan motion presented this evening. Master plans uh, represent strategic umbrellas under which related executional programs and initiatives can be identified, developed, considered, and potentially implemented. Importantly, these umbrella, uh, umbrellas can also represent funding choice envelopes and enabling staff and council to consider first cut budgeting priority at the strategic level, i.e. recreation versus waterfront versus culture rather than at the specific activity level, i.e. baseball diamonds versus promenade versus town hall library twinning. And just in closing, Saugeen Shores has over 10 years successfully developed and adopted master plans that provide strategic direction for parks and trails, recreation, waterfront, and a number of operational activity areas. It is now time to develop a cultural master plan that will provide a strategic framework for this important municipal asset. Saugeen Shores and its three community areas have rich history, and has provided unique cultural and heritage attributes that, that need to be brought to the fore, forefront in order to provide the strategic direction for future programs and, and uh, initiative development. That's from Duncan McCallum, Southampton resident, and he asked me to read that, so I did. So just in summary, Mr. Mayor, it's just something to prepare staff, uh, hopefully get in preparation for the 2019 budget. And I didn't know whether... Thank you. Thank you. Councilor Grace. Uh, Mr. Mayor, um, you know, I know that the term cultural may be overused and maybe not even really understood in some ways. Uh, there are so many aspects of our lives that have to do with culture, but when I was thinking about it, I was thinking about it in terms of public culture um, because that's our responsibility and that's what we're trying to um, augment here. Um, so that could be attending a free concert in a park, which we um, see throughout the summer, um, or it could be attending a concert in, in one of our um, facilities. Uh, it could be watching a theater performance. Um, it could be uh, singing in a choir in a church or um, somewhere else in a school, visiting an art gallery, looking at historic architecture as you're walking down the street. 
Um, the bottom line is that if we are able to provide rich and varied cultural experiences um, in our community, that's what attracts and retains uh, our residents, our businesses, our visitors, um, and that bolsters our economy as well. Um, when you look at our documents, you see cultural icons on the covers. Um, as important as roads are, uh, we see the Southampton Town Hall, we see our, our harbor, we see a picture of Chantry Island or the range light. Um, and that's because that's how we're branded. In fact, our branding, our recent business to Bruce branding that we approved in April as a council, um, these are the, the brands. Embrace your creativity for Southampton. Uh, energizing innovation for Port Elgin and live creatively for the whole municipality. Um, culture, public culture is really important. Um, so why a cultural master plan? Because that will give, allow us to assess what we have, uh, to uh, identify gaps and opportunities uh, for improvement and to enhance uh, our, our public culture, to enhance our quality of life and the quality of the place that we live in. Um, so I also agree with Duncan McCallum, this is the right time and hope we'll approve this motion. Thanks. Any further comments? All in favor? Opposed to any, that's carried, thank you. So the next item on the agenda is to authorize the Municipal Heritage Phase 3, and uh, I'll read the motion, and I've got a such a amendment I would, would, would uh, I'll read the motion. It's been moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber and seconded by Councillor Neil Minaj that bylaw 55-2018 being a bylaw to establish a Municipal Heritage Register for the Town of Saugeen Shores is hereby read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this 25th day of 2018. And I'd ask the committee to consider the, 250, the church man's the 254 uh, High Street. Uh, uh, remove, just take it off the registry at this time because, and I apologize, we, the county owns that piece of property and hasn't had an opportunity to really discuss it or, or uh, an opportunity to comment to it. And I know it's part of a bigger, possibly bigger idea of uh, part of the archives and, and something else there. So just as long as we just remove it from the registry and I'll remove I'll vacate the chair and move the amendment if, if I don't see anybody, if we don't see anybody willing to do that. But I think it's not to say that it's not important, but I, we, we should give the county a, an opportunity to comment to it. So, I'll, I'll, sorry, Councilor Madison, so you would so move that? Okay. Do you want to, and second by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, or sorry, Dep, uh, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. <clears throat> so, do, do you want this written on here, Linda? Okay. Uh, the bylaw is amended. everybody's concurrent staff movers. So, any further comments to this? Uh, Councillor Mike Myatt. Mr. Mayor, um, the, um, is the, the objective here f uh, to provide uh, additional time for the county to make comment, and in other words, um, the, the, there still will be the opportunity in the future after the county makes comment that it could, it could be re-added if, in fact, we decided that's the right thing to do, correct? Councillor Dave Mayette. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, and just just for my own clarity and, and perhaps the clarity of some people who may be listening to this, the 
The uh, obligation is to notify a, a, per, a property owner that their property has been identified. That, or, it's actually, not an okay. obligation, but Sorry. that has been the standard. That, okay, the, the practice. That's the practice that we have tried practice. to follow in the past, sort of okay. a courtesy. Yep. A courtesy practice to let you know that sure. your property has been identified for cultural heritage mm -hmm. significance. And, uh, and in the case of perhaps some of these, but perhaps maybe not all of them, the property owner may or may not have responded with uh, an objection to that. But a, a person doesn't necessarily have the right to object, to say, I do not want my property on your, on your listing. But because the nature of the business that we're all in here and the reason that we're here is to respect the, the wishes of the residents of Soggy Shores and the property owners. So if a person strongly objects to their property being put on the register, due consideration would be and apparently has been given in these cases. Is that, is that a fair statement? Yeah, I think so. And I think in the future, I mean, if, if someone had an issue, I mean, they could always raise it again at some other point, say, I, I don't think it's on the registry and it would be up to council at that time to make a decision on it. And, but but a property owner wouldn't have to necessarily give justification as to why they don't want it on there. Like, I mean, if we have registered a property because uh, a certain historical person lived or grew up or something so even happened in that house, and the person came along and said, no, I've done some research and that didn't happen or that yeah. person didn't come, then that would be a, maybe a, a fit matter for removal. But a person could just say, I don't want it. Yep, yep. Right. Yeah, and I, I mean, it's, it's, it would be up to the council at the time to decide that. Right. I'll go right down the line, Councilor Grace, and then. So, um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, can I clarify? Are we talking about the this total thing? We're not just talking about the mats. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I want to thank the um, Heritage Committee and commend the Heritage Committee for all the work, uh, the volunteer hours that they put into doing the research uh, for this and organizing uh, this. This is a really important contribution to our community. Um, I do have a question, uh, I guess, for um, the clerk. Um, in our letters to the property owners, do we provide information about what listing means from the Ontario Heritage Act? Because it's my understanding that consent is not required um, and n even notification, technically. Sorry, I'm not familiar with it, so I am having a look at the letter that was sent out. And it, number three? Yes. There are three letters, yes. Um, and it, th there is an explanation of it. I think it is clear, but uh, we can certainly circulate those if you would like them. Um, I think it would be, I'd like to see um, what the letters said, please, at some point. Okay. Um, a couple of other things I wanted to say about this. Um, I will, what I would like to do is to see, uh, I wouldn't support this notion, this, um, by law as written um, for the following reasons. Um, it's my understanding that when we received the responses after several, maybe two or three in some cases, notifications to the property owners, um, that some of the responses provided new information that was um, sounded very reasonable. For instance, one of the buildings had been removed altogether. Uh, another one had had uh, had you know been destroyed partially because of a fire and rebuilt and that had destroyed its heritage value something we may not have been familiar with but that wasn't the case with all of the the um, properties that were listed uh, three I think of the properties uh, either didn't give a reason or uh, didn't even really state uh, in a in a any kind of, it, the, it was maybe an insinuation that somebody didn't want to be on the list, but it wasn't stated clearly. Um, and just to review uh, that the Ontario Heritage Act, uh, Section 27, 1.2, um, says that listing is not heritage designation. Um, it doesn't prevent the homeowner from doing renovations, uh, updating their property, making changes to it. Um, it, what it does is to give the town 
the council, which ultimately makes this decision, a cooling off period uh, before demolition. That's um, besides listing as being honoring and recognizing um, cultural uh, a, her a heritage building. It also gives us 60 days to consider that specific example of that particular building um, in the case of proposed demolition. Um, so, um, you know, it's ironic that right after we pass the cultural um, master plan motion um, that we are um, considering removing um, cultural heritage, uh, heritage properties, which are very val valuable. Um, in our corporate strategic plan of 2017, one of the common uh, comments about what people valued in our town is small town charm. Um, one of the elements that gives us small town charm are those historic heritage buildings that people see. Um, when they come to visit our town. That's countless people say that to me. I love walking around your streets because of, uh, I love looking at these old houses. I love looking at these old buildings. Um, that's part of our economic development plan. And um, so, um, Mr. Mayor, if it's uh, appropriate for me, I'd, I'd like to try to make a motion um, or like to put forward a motion if it's appropriate to revise the list as presented to us. Um, which removes, I'd like to remove the three properties um, instead of six properties. I'd like to say that this list removes the three properties uh, where owners who provided new information justifying their exclusion. That would be, in my understanding, 173 High Street, 65 Water Street, and 38 Blind Line, which would leave then, uh, and I guess that would also include your proposal of the uh, manse. Um, so that would leave 16 properties on the phase three list instead of 13. Do you want me to write that out or? I think it's getting kind of complicated so that we want to make sure we know the intent of what we're doing and what we're voting on here. So, uh, well, she's. I'll let you talk some more. Yeah, you'll get your opportunity. But I think the rate, pardon, the, the, just hang on, there. just hang on. I think if you're proposing an amendment, then I would ask, is there any seconders for it? So, it's, okay. So then if you want to write it out, to be, to be clear, I think we're, and you can speak to it now. I now. need a blank for it. Oh, I think I used mine, sorry. There's one. There's one. Thank you. I shouldn't be aiding and abetting you, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. Uh, it's not the best thing. We, we need to we need to play this we need to play this out though. There are steps in the process. There are steps for the owners. There are steps for the heritage committee. There are steps for council, as you are well aware. And and uh, to do what Cheryl is suggesting, first of all, let's go back and 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 just quickly revisit. Absolutely, we can put anything on the registry that that the Municipal Heritage Register, we can list them without any notification. Council asked the Heritage Committee to go through a notification and then, and then another notification. And finally, some of those people said, hello, uh, please don't include my, my, my residents because of the following reasons. And some of those reasons are complicated. And let's not beat around the bush here. Six Huron Street is, is right in our face. And the owner of Six Huron Street has made it quite clear that that, that residence sat unattended for many years, decades of years, and it is not in good shape. And so we can delay, we can do this, we can, we can put the home on the registry and we get that 60 days notice. So play this out. 60 days from now, she, the owner, can ask the demolition permit to demolish that six year on street home. And we've got 60 days to make our decision as to, as to whether we're going to enact the, the Heritage Act. Now, Diane says she's ready to jump in and jump all over me when I get this wrong, if I get it wrong, which is fair. And because she's been at this a lot longer than I have. 60 days, 
and the demolition permit is asked for, we've got to make a decision whether we want to go through the designation process. And the designation process basically says, you cannot take it down, and furthermore, we're going to preserve it. With what? What money do we have to, to force a resident to preserve their property because we decided to designate it? If that property requires hundreds of thousands of dollars to keep it in its, its, in it, in its original shape, with the, that would be the intention, who has the money? Where's the money coming from? Why are we putting that person in that position? And then furthermore, just to add to the equation, the research the Heritage Committee, members of the Heritage Committee completed on that, that residence was, in, in support of the Lathams, who did some really good work, was that there are many, many, like, like Cheryl is saying, Southampton is blessed with hundreds of these, similar. And, and if we're going to try to save them all, then, then we've got our hands really tied. We're going we're to be really busy. And so what we really need, in my opinion, is a, is a phase four registry that puts every other conceivable home we could think of in Saugeen Shores on it and just list them and just say we want 60 days notice to decide what to do next. And that 60 days notice means that we've got to deliberate at this, at this, in this council chambers and we've got to tell the Heritage Committee or tell staff that they've got to prevent that home from being demolished and we've got to come up, we're going to negotiate with the owner on how we're going to fund keeping it in place. And, and so that's the part that I honestly don't know how it works. How it works when we get to the point where we negotiate and say, you need $200,000 to, to, to make it safe to live in and make it nice to live in at today's standards. How does that part work? I am not sure. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Stephanie Mayor Huber. Um, thank you. Councilor Minaj got it almost um, completely right, except um, the idea of designation isn't necessarily always the entire structure. It could be elements of a structure that get protected. So um, as an example, um, the cottage that's at the corner of um, Morpus Street in Huron, a lot of people know it as the Bowman House. Um, one side of the structure is designated, not the whole thing. Um, and other, other properties, there's 12 that are designated in Saugeen Shores. There's elements of the structures that, that met the criteria for designation. Um, just just to, to add a little more comment to the mix, the Heritage Committee um, originally sent out uh, requests about phase four properties, or phase three properties, sorry, um, for the register. It's called a register, not a registry. We, we correct ourselves all the time, too. For the register on May the 18th, 2016. We sent those letters out to 18 property owners and we did include a package of information about, you know, all kinds of stuff from the province and there were comments about what was the difference and a little bit about, you know, why we wanted to list them, although we hadn't done research yet. And we also offered them the chance to speak with us, have one of us go out and talk to them. They could have participated with research with us and we asked them to, to if they had anything, to throw it into the mix. Um, Quite frankly, um, you know, we had a few people call. Um, a couple members of the Heritage Committee went out and talked to a few people. But there wasn't um, um, a lot of disinterest in the process, I'll call it. Um, well, then um, two properties got added. One was the Anglican Church Manse um, in Southampton that's that been discussed in number six Huron Street. Um, prior to the... the list coming to council the last time, the Heritage Committee itself sent out another letter. Um, the unfortunate thing is I don't think that got conveyed very well at our meeting. Um, we only had one response um, that was um, a comment, um, and it was from uh, the fellow who owns the property on the blind line, and he was actually at our last, our, at the meeting where we discussed this, but he got here late so we didn't get to do the open forum part. Um, that was the only comment we received from all 20 properties. Um, it was the third letter that went out after the council meeting. Um, and, and the letters were had consistent information in them. The third one, though, um, was very specific about, you know, in big, bold letters, 
if you have an objection to this, let us know. It was inviting that comment. Um, but please know that all of those property owners um, did receive um, communication from the Heritage Committee. In some cases, they had it quite a while ago, and, and we did talk with a few of them. Um, Councillor Grace's comments about new information. Um, of the six responses that came in, two were verbal and four were written. Um, we would consider that three of them did provide new information. And so, you know, I, I appreciate how she sort of separated them out. Um, number six, Huron Street, is, is a tough one because, um, you know, it certainly is worthy of, of being on the register. It meets all kinds of criteria, and so, um, and, and it, it fits in perfectly with everything that we've done. Um, so it belongs there. Um, you know, we all know, though, that there's another process coming. So, um, if it ends up there. And so that's the part that um, we don't have much experience with designating properties. So I can't offer um, a whole lot of advice. The last time we did it in Soggy Shores was 1999. And we, there's new rules with the province. So we don't really understand um, how that would work. Um, there probably would be some costs involved. Um, but, you know, certainly that property does meet what would put somebody on the register. Has did all of those properties um, and you know we were at the last heritage committee meeting we had big discussion about you know we already sent our letter out and we thought the letters that we got this time were council directed letters so you know we had a discussion kind of in a void and we felt we fell back on our our thing that you know when somebody comments you know we just made a decision to, to suggest that you know not there but all of those properties were worthy of being being there. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, I, I erroneously put down the wrong address for the church mail. Cross that out and put in the Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and some good comments across the way. I think the Heritage Committee did exactly the right thing in this situation. Council did ask for these comments. The comments uh, came back. Some of them asked to be removed. Others gave us new information. Uh, they followed their process, removed those uh, names completely, and then made, sent the decision to Council. And it's Council's decision as to what's going to be on this list and what isn't. And I would say that, in particular, with regard to Six Huron, it's, to me, uh, it's more it's you know you get into the conversation about designation stuff but we're we're not at that point the point we're at here is where um, the potential exists for changes to happen on the property and a lot of members of the public have come to us and say you know we'd like to have some say in that before a demolition takes place which is what the registry permits it gives you it gives the public an opportunity to say we really value this property and maybe we should do something about it so it gives that delay if that moment ever comes when a demolition permit is applied for so it's a per I think it's 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 not a, a draconian move to take away some property right it's to say when 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 a lot of people in the community get together and say we really value something um we want an opportunity to say something about it before it goes away um that's what the heritage that's what the heritage act gives us the ability to do through this registry and so so uh, we're doing that, and I'd also point out that my reading of the letter from Six Year on Street didn't actually ask to be taken off the registry. It just said, you know, I'm looking forward to your decision. So on that one, I think, I, in particular, I, I think even the property owner didn't object to be included on the list, so I don't have any difficulty including it. And on the other ones, I think if 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 demolition ever comes up and and people really don't want to demolish demolish buildings that they bought because they paid for the buildings and demolishing them is a huge blow so we're not going to see a lot of this happen i don't think uh, but it gives the public this opportunity where they have really identified an interest uh to come to, to come and speak about it and i think that's wholly appropriate and i don't think there's a problem with that and uh, so I just, on the one hand, I wanted to say that this is not a repudiation of what the Heritage Committee has done. I think the Heritage Committee did exactly the right thing here. It's Council's decision, ultimately, and I think we should move to add these few properties back as Councillor Grace has moved and, uh, and uh, give the public that say uh, in those properties. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so I, I have the amendment. I think the way to kind of clarify that, because one of them, that the original motion deals with one of the items on the amended. So, I guess 
could get complicated if this pat fails. And then... No, it just shouldn't, no. Okay. Hey. So then it's uh, the amendment that was moved by uh, Deputy Mayor Charbonneau and Councillor Madison as to remove 254 High Street. All in favor? Opposed? That's carried. So then I'll go back to um, the second amendment, and it's been moved by Councillor Grace and seconded by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau. Uh, amendment to that uh, amendment to bylaw 55 2018 <coughs> that the following four properties are removed from the phase three of the proposed heritage list. 173 High Street, Southampton, 65 Water Street, Southampton, 38 Blind Line, Sogging Township, and 254 High Street, which we've dealt with. So any further questions to that amendment? Just so I'm clear, so if we if we support this, this amendment that, uh, that's on the floor, we are, um, in fact, unless I'm misunderstanding it, are we uh, disagreeing with the recommendation that's being put forth by the Heritage Committee? That so, yeah, I guess because we've still got the main motion to deal with, we've got two amendments, and if this passes and the other one fails, we're in, the, we're in kind of a pickle, right? If this... So... Because this, this, this original motion that we've amended takes 254 High Street off it, and the list remains intact. The amendment then talks about removing these four. So if we pass this, then those three would stay on, right? <laughs> this is pretty confusing. I'm just going to try a clarification. So I think the intent is with the schedule to the bylaw does not currently have 173 High Street. It does not have 65 Water Street, and it does not have 38 Blind Line. So we would actually like to add those to the schedule to the bylaw. You would like? Would you like them to be on the register? And that's not what we're considering. That's Go ahead. Do try If I may, what, we, what we're looking to do is to add 6 Huron Street North, add 4845 Bruce Road 3, add 672 Godridge Street to the Heritage Registry. Councillor Rich? So, in effect, which ones? So, right now, we have got a motion that takes six off, right? So, so, what, so but, the, but if we, so, but if there, so there'll only be three come off, or is that correct? I don't know the numbers now. I don't have the yeah, list so in front of me. It, it, I have, you, you could just kind of stroke those off on 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 the ones that are being. Amended. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. It was my intent to, and I, I guess I didn't do it uh, very well, but it was my intent to have the, the four, um, to amend the list that was, um, the list of those properties that were to be removed, um, to change that, to change, right, so it would be the 173 High Street, the 65 Water Street, the 38 Blind Line, and then um, we've already excluded the 254 High Street property. That's and just if I can, it's probably easier to just to say the ones that the recommended for removal that you want back on the registry. That was your intent, right? Okay. So. With all the uh, ups and downs of this, could we table this till our next meeting where we can have everything sorted out and brought in? Because we're, we're going around in circles here trying to figure out where we're at. But, <laughs> yeah, okay. 
How, how would we do that? We've already, we've removed 254. Why don't we give first and second reading and then we come back at the next, it, there's, there's not urgency to this thing and, and, and come back and we'll, we'll have the amendment that as, as you're proposing, uh, Councillor Grace. Okay? Very, very briefly now, okay, go ahead. Yep. I'd like to draw attention to the lame duck status of, of Council for making decisions that include money and that th this will be turned over to staff. So if, in fact, the owner I th of... I think I can clarify that. I think, and I'll ask the clerk, this will not... Lame duck will not uh, clear, um, affect this decision, will it? That is correct. It will not. Okay. Even if we get into the into the uh, register the designation phase, that's not what we're talking about. Designation here. We're talking about a register. Sixty days from now, if if I'm the owner. That's of, then talk about it in sixty days from now, Neil. I'm saying we will okay. be able to. It'll be no effect. Okay. So then I will change this to give this first and second reading. I'll initial that on your behalf. So I'll read this then. It's uh, the bylaw 55-2018 being a bylaw to establish a municipal heritage for the town of Saugeen, Jurors and Sherbert at a first and second time. Um, this 25th day of June, 2018. All favor. Carried, thank you. Big long list trying to sort it out. Gets us coffee. <laughs> So the next item on the agenda then is a bylaw. We're in, no, uh, it's bylaw to establish as a 0.3 meter reserve on part of public highways, and it's been moved by Councillor Madison and second by Councillor Mike Myatt. The bylaw 56-2018 being a bylaw to establish a 0.3 meter reserve on Plan 3M228 and Plan 3M235 as part of a public highways is here read a first, second, and third time, and finally passed and sealed this 25th day of June 2018. Any questions or comments? All in favor? That's carried. Any opposed? The next then is a bylaw to adopt a community emergency management plan, and it's been moved by Vice Deputy Mayor Huber, seconded by Councilor Minaj, that bylaw 57-2018 being a bylaw to adopt the Town of Saugeen Shores Community Emergency Management Plan is hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this 25th day of June 2018. Any comments, questions? All in favor? That's carried. Next is the confirmatory bylaw and it's been moved by Councilor Rich, second by Deputy Richarbonneau, that bylaw 58-2018. Being a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of the Council of the Town of Saugeen Shores is hereby read a first, second, and third time and finally passed and sealed this 25th day of June 2018. All in favor? That's carried. And the motion we're looking for is that it's been moved by Deputy Mayor Charbonneau, second by Councilor Riches at this regular council meeting of June 25th, 2018, hereby adjourned at 10.04 p.m. All in favor? We're, we're adjourned. <laughs>